Hi everyone, so welcome to this week's video. If you're new, hi, my name is Caroline. I'm a UK-based physics lecturer. If you work at a UK university and you in any way do research, you're probably aware of REP 2021. Um, but if you're not familiar with this term, I thought in this video I'll explain what is REF and why does it matter to UK universities. So first things first, what does REF stand for? Well, it's the initials REF and it stands for Research Excellence Framework. And essentially, it's the method that we have in the UK for assessing the quality of the research outputs from a university. Um, so the last REF before this one was in 2014. So we had REF 2014 and we have literally just had the deadline for REF 2021. Now, the way it works is universities get a period of time. So for the current REF 2021, we got from the 1st of January 2014 until the end of 2020. So until the 31st of December 2020. And across that time period, universities could select research outputs. So these are typically journal publications and put those forward to be assessed within the REF 2021 framework. The, the REF panel is independent from the university. So there is a panel of experts, typically these are senior academics, um, research leaders, and this is the panel that will be evaluating the journals, the publications, the outputs put forward by that university. It operates in a structure. There are 34 different categories that make up REF 2021 and each one of those categories is aligned to a particular subject or research area. I'm a physics-based lecturer. Most of my journal publications will therefore align to the physics category, which is B9. <laughs> so within REF 2021, any output that I put forward as um, a publication will align into this category physics B9, uh, and they will be assessed by the appropriate panel. Um, now, the, the 34 categories, and I've got them written down here, they're actually divided into four groups. So as a physicist, I'm in group B, and group B is physical sciences, engineering and mathematics. Um, we've also got group A, and that's medicine, health and life sciences. Group C, which is social sciences, and group D, which is arts and humanities. So whichever research discipline you're working in at a university, that department will be getting its publications together and putting them into the appropriate category, which feeds into the appropriate one of these panels, A, B, C or D. Now, when the university submits these journal publications to be assessed, what actually is the REF process looking at? So how are these journal papers being scored, if you like? Well, on the REF website, they detail that they're looking for three distinct elements. The quality of the output, the impact beyond academia, and the environment that supports the research. And I think sometimes, you know, it can be quite difficult to think, OK, well, actually, how do we evaluate the quality of somebody's publication, somebody's journal output. Is it the number of times it gets cited, that particular paper? Is it the number of locations that paper gets read in? Um, is it if it motivates further research and work? Is that a particularly impactful paper? Well, the system that we have, um, at least in the UK, is they are ranked according to whether they're a four star, three star, two star, one star, or actually an ungraded publication. Now, as an academic, we all want to get four star publications because a four star publication means that it is world leading. You know, it's like the top of the top. When you get a four star, that's an awesome paper. Um, but not all papers can be four star papers. As much as I would love every single paper I write to be a four star paper, not going to happen. So if you don't get the four star rating, your paper might be awarded three star. And that means that it's internationally excellent. Two stars means that it's internationally recognised and one star means that it's nationally recognised. Um, there's a lot more detail on the REF website about these kind of categories and how these papers are scored and put into these different areas. Um, but that just kind of gives you the idea that there's these rankings and that assesses your paper output. Now, 
From the university perspective, once the university submits in their, their offering, their journal publications for that period of time, it's then just a waiting game. So then the universities will wait for a period of months whilst all these assessments are made, and then they will get feedback from the REF process as to how their research output was scored for that particular time period. And you might think, well, why does it matter? You know, why does it matter what a research output score is for a university? And I think it matters on several levels. Um, if you are a academic looking to work at a, a university, research might well be very, very important to you. And so you want to be going to a university that has got a good research track record, a good research output. If you are a student looking to study at a university, you know, you might be personally interested in having a career in research, but even if not, you want to probably be taught by academics that are, are leading in their areas, leading in their fields, so you want them to have a really good research output. So when they teach you as a student in the classroom, you're benefiting from that kind of that research expertise. So yeah, essentially the, the REF output does matter, um, but as a lecturer, my contribution really is just working out which are my better papers and putting those forward for consideration within the department. Um, and as I said, each department will have their own system and I've got amazing colleagues who are very much part of the REF process and actually do the difficult work of getting us all organised and our submission ready to go out to the panel for assessment. Now, alongside REF, there's also TEF. So REF, R-E-F, is the Research Excellence Framework. TEF, T-E-F, that is the Teaching Excellence Framework. And there's also KEF, and I think that's now the Knowledge Exchange Framework. Um, but I will save TEF and KEF for another video. And today we'll just focus on REF. So if you've been involved in REF 2021, um, maybe you were part of the team putting it together for your university submission. I hope it went smoothly. I hope everything kind of progressed nicely and you can now have a bit of relaxation time and not think about the REF process. If you are joining a UK university, you know, just be aware that REF is a thing. And at some point your research is going to be asked to be considered to go into the next round for REF, which I guess will be in the next seven years <laughs> looking forward. Um, but I hope that kind of helped explain a little bit what these initials REF mean and why they matter to universities. Um, but yeah, have a good few days, have a good week. Our undergraduate students are still on spring vacation, but I'm now very much back at work. So have a good week, look after yourselves, do like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I love reading all the comments. Um, have a good few days and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.